Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Good morning, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, 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 sir. How many total uh, number of participants are expected? Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Around 155. Around 155. So we right now have about 90 people already joined. So let's. Wait for a minute or two before we start, hoping that others will join fast. Okay, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good Good morning, sir. Kindly confirm if my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is it? Sir. Yes, sir. What, is sir. It? Yes, sir. what exactly is visible right now? Google, sir. Google. Okay, cool. Google. So, uh, I think uh, we should now start because time is up and uh, hoping that. Yeah. Okay, so let's. Uh, before we actually formally start our slides, I'd like to welcome all the participants into this session. And uh, you, I would like this session to be interactive. But since the number of participants are uh, pretty large, uh, uh, you know, uh, what I would say is, uh, I'll ask the, the participants to put their uh, comments in the chat box so that it is easier for me to respond to uh, those queries and if any by reading the chat box and then and if if your queries or your comments are already in the chat box then you don't have to repeat it that's point one point yes, four, we we uh, are going to for about next one and a half hours we are going to talk about the we are going to talk about the um potential of technology for helping us do better teaching better learning and better research that's the objective. So with that objective, we are going to, uh, before we take up the slides, I would request participants to kindly uh, kindly share the um, your comments, if any, especially the um, problems that you would like. Because actually, IT is a solution enabler. We all know that uh, IT alone is not a financier. But information and communication technologies can be used for finding meaningful solutions, affordable solutions to various problems, including the problem of teaching, learning, and research. So we would like to uh, we would like to uh, 
understand from the faculty members what are the common problems that you have observed as faculty members that you would like to be solved problems as teacher as faculty member that you have seen from your eyes that you would like to solve probably exploring solution through technology so can i hear from you for a minute or two in the chat box what are the problems that you would have seen or faced that you would like to solve through technology please mention just go ahead please provide some inputs because end of the by the end of the session we would like to see that some of the concerns or some of your inputs are you walk away from this session with some some pra practical technology enabled solutions that you can employ in your uh, teaching learning process in your institutions from tomorrow that's the objective with that objective in mind i'm asking you to share some of the problems that you would have observed or you would have faced we all have used uh, student students do not respond to the questions thrown open to them for interaction very nice very nice input any other any other uh, problems that you would have seen so students do not respond to the questions there could be two reasons one is they don't know the i mean uh, they are not at the same page they are not understanding the context or the subject or they are not interested or they are afraid that if they start interacting their ignorance will get exposed or something like that right i'm, I'm just thinking loudly what could be the possibility so how okay contingency plan while the instructor gets disconnected okay so you are talking about the um, uh, online uh, class if the connectivity breaks and and the participants are dropped out how do we take care we don't have rich libraries in our college usually we deal it as we very nice they don't want to take part in learning activity very nice students lose concentration class very easily they are usually not responsive very true now we will try to follow up for inline teaching very nice very nice very nice so let us uh, understand let us understand technological gaps in the online i'm so sorry for the typo no no issues no issues so uh, there are gaps in the technical infrastructure there are gaps in the skill set very nice so we will try to see practical solutions to some of the problems that is being uh, stated in the chat box very nice so we will we will uh, get back to our discussion and we'll try to um, see see recently uh, i think few years back we were uh, faced with covid pandemic right so let me try to open the slide pack and let me know when the slide is visible to you on your screen allow me a minute or two to uh, open the slides are the slides visible now yes sir it is visible yes, yes sir yes, visible sir very nice sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. So, see, what we are trying to do is now we are trying to find uh, you know we we are going to discuss some of the technology enabled tools that we can incorporate into our teaching learning and research process that will help us to be more effective more efficient and you know uh, uh, be better teachers better researchers better research supervisors better you know mentors so with that objective let's proceed with these slides and we will see to, by the end of the session we would have already found some solutions to the problems that were flagged by some of the faculty members in the chat box now teaching and learning and research are the key activities in the higher education system and we all know that in the legacy methodologies the methodologies of 20th century we were uh, there have i mean teaching learning process is not new it is very very old but only you know the paradigm is changing for example uh, this what is visible right now your, on your screen called cone of experience is actually a well established research outcome 
that indicates that if we are uh, reading a material, we means either we ourselves or our students, they are we we can only retain certain percent of it, right? And if we enhance, uh, if we also hear the content, then the level of retention becomes higher. So oh, this is actually based on some studies that have been conducted. So if we also are able to see it visually, then the level of retention gets even further. And the if we also blend the hearing and seeing also, the, we can retain up to 50% also. So we have got 50%. We see and hear 50%, right? So here is the which means the uh, key takeaway is high level of retention can be achieved through active involvement in learning. Now, some of the faculty members were flagging that, you know, we pose a question, students don't respond, into the students don't interact. So it gets disheartening for the faculty members. Now, we, uh, in fact, what the historical uh, or the, I will say, traditional method of teaching learning was, when we were students in our schools, we had only one way. That is, we will have to uh, wait for our Guruji or for our teacher to deliver a lecture. So chalk and talk was the technology and the teacher will uh, be the source of information. And uh, we will be attending the classes. And if we, God forbid, happen to miss the class, we are gone. We'll have to wait for the next time the same lecture gets delivered by the same faculty maybe the next year or whatever. So that was the history. But in the present scenario, things are changing a lot. That is no longer valid in 21st century. Because if I take the example of a geography example that I often take in my sessions, let us say um, we, a, a teacher is going to explain the concept of galaxy to his or her students for the first time. So students do not know about galaxy, let us say. They are, this is the first lecture or first time they are getting introduced to the concept of galaxy. Then the teacher will walk into the class, draw a diagram on the green board or white board or black board, whatever. And that diagram will, drawing that diagram will take several minutes. The teacher will draw the diagram and then will explain the orbits, the heavenly bodies, the rotating you know, bodies, etc., etc., satellites, etc. And then try to explain the concept to the students. Now, the, the galaxy itself is actually a three dimension. The galaxy itself is a three dimensional concept. Whereas the uh, galaxy is three dimensional concept, but the uh, diagram is two dimensional. So while the best effort is made by the geography teacher to explain, the concept will still be vaguely understood because it is not possible to visualize three dimensions on a two dimension uh, blackboard. This was the history. But in the current scenario, it is very easy, pos easily possible at three minutes or two minutes, a, a, a YouTube video or any open educational resources having multimedia three dimensional, you know, moving objects. If that video is played in the classroom on the projector or in the smart classroom, the students can very easily get an clear-cut understanding of what galaxy is all about. So this enhancement of teaching aid through technology is possible now, wasn't possible something like 20, 30 years back. At that point in time, teaching aids were there, but that teaching aid was like overhead projector, transparency projector. That is what our teachers used to do when we were students in 90s and 80s. At that time, uh, our teachers will be using OSP projector and transparency. That was the teaching aid. So if they want to project anything, there will be a projector and there will be a transparency that through which they will, they will project. That was the only teaching aid available. But with the passage of time, with the enhancement in technology, things are evolving and it is very, very easy now to use multimedia technology to enhance the level of learning. So that is where it comes the role of teaching aid. We had been using teaching aids from time to time to reinforce the concepts being explained by the teacher, to ensure that the teacher's point is understood, signal what is important, what is essential, enable the students to visualize or experience something that is impractical to see or do in real life, engage students' other senses in the learning process, facilitate different styles of learning. So this, this was the 
concept as far as teaching aid. So teaching aid is not new. Only what is new is the aid itself is getting enhanced. So teaching aids now available. So what are the emerging trends in the uh, a for, by way of using ICT for education? Now the there is a transformation happening. Now teaching learning environment is transforming. So there was a traditional model where the teacher's role was important. So the focus was only on teachers. So refer the example that I was giving few minutes back that the learner's role was passive. He has to attend the talk or the class of the teacher and the technology was chalk and talk. But then with the passage of time with the enhancement, the model changed from trans tra traditional to information. So in the information model, the focus is not on the teacher, but on the learners. So here the learners have to be activated. So they have to have an active role and what they need is a personal computer. Personal computer here does not mean literally a desktop or a notebook PC or a laptop, but it could be even a smartphone, which also has some computing power in, in, in held in the hand of the students. So there has to be a device which has got some computing power where the things like the video of Galaxy or a small video lecture or some, you know, relevant material can be referred by the student. So that is the model that from traditional to information and from information to knowledge. So in the knowledge model, the focus is not on learners alone, but on the group of learners and the role is role is actually learner's role is adaptive and here we not only need the network pc but also the network which means we need the connectivity now here comes the third model knowledge model now i will park it here and i'll pose a question to the participants now please let me know in all your classes because all the faculty members would be having students uh, you know would be having you know first hand experience of handling the classes so help me understand all the students of your class are of the same you know level or they can be categorized into above average below average and average help me understand yes it Haji, is, sir. because actually not we can all, bifurcate them hello you can bifurcate them absolutely so in any class something like 10 15 20 percent will be above average right the percentage may change from class to class, but there will be a small portion which is above average. There will be a large portion which is average and there will be a, another small portion which is below average students, right? So if I have to classify the students into three groups and then the learning needs of each group are slightly different, isn't it? Because as a teacher, a good teacher will always try to focus on the weakest lot of these students and try to uplift them. And in that process, the other ones, which is the average and above average will anyway get benefited. So that is what will be aiming the objectives and aims of the teacher. But we all know that when you want to announce a remedial class for the weak students, you will announce remedial class for all the students and the sincere lot will be sitting and some of the average students will be sitting and the actual beneficiaries who are being targeted are missing from the uh from that extra activity or extra class this is very very common right we all have experienced it that we were trying to target the weaker students but uh, as some of the faculty members were mentioning in the chat box that when we do that the student with throw a question we op you know pose a question so that we can initiate the discussion understand the weak areas understand the doubts that the individual student may have but he's not responding he's not taking interest so how can how so this knowledge model or the model which is relevant in the 21st century requires students to be grouped into different categories and give them adaptive learning environment and this is very much possible and we will look right in this session how we can do that right so this is possible and this is what is uh, is the need of the hour in 21st century now, how the role of teachers is, is, in itself is changing. Earlier in the tra traditional model, teacher was the transmitter of knowledge. So when the teacher, somebody misses the class of the particular teacher, he is gone because he has no other methodology of acquiring the knowledge in the particular institution. But it is now no longer uh, truly and fully valid. 
it is transforming into teacher is becoming guide and facilitator of knowledge instead of controller of learning it is creator of learning environment instead of always an expert it is collaborator and co-learner instead of learning to use ICT it is using ICT to enhance learning and instead of expository it is interactive so this is the transformation which is happening in the role of teachers now how the curriculum needs to change let's look at the curriculum changes needed by the 20, 21st century because the way the things are uh, have changed in the recent past with the incorporation of the technology enabled uh, enabled solutions into the teaching learning process into the education there are changes happening for example earlier the curriculum was focusing more on memorizing of facts but it is no longer true our curriculum now has to be more inquiry based because if 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 we refer the earlier uh, versions when we were students the teachers will ask questions like uh, when was gandhi ji born in which city he was born what was the gandhi ji's mother name father name this will be typically a question that will be asked in the school but in today's scenario these questions are meaningless the reason being the reason being the reason being uh, uh, the uh, the class the reason being um, we are now uh, having uh, google so a student can always google i'm in the middle of the class please come please come back after the class don't disturb me uh, come come back after the class show it to the sudeep so so uh, please note that uh, sorry for the interruption somebody tried to apologies somebody because i'm the in my office somebody's tried walked in and tried to disturb so um coming back to the changes in the curriculum uh, and delivery so now it has to change because if today if the teacher asked where what is the when was gandhi ji born student have got smartphone he will google and write so we really can't judge these students right so probably in today's scenario the a more relevant question could be what would be gandhi ji doing if he was alive today <laughs> so here the student will have to apply this the knowledge skills analyze and try to write an answer something like that right so the learning uh, uh, so today's curriculum has to be inquiry based not memory based likewise instead of artificial teaching exercises it should be authentic learning exercises now i'll take another example let us say take the example of law so there is a, a, a there is a law in the law what is happening is there is there's some uh, um, some uh, in the league, uh, uh, you know law colleges I'm, I'm taking an example of law college i'm sure same example you can apply to your own uh, subject and to your institutions earlier what will happen is a, a student of law will study the law courses in his or her institution after passing out he or she will go and join uh, some senior lawyer practicing in some court and would try to get some experience on over a passage of time he will get some he or she will get some practical exposure but today the technology has changed the paradigm supreme court high court many high courts and supreme court also has started live streaming the hearing of the cases which means now a student of law college can actually witness what is happening inside the court without even complete even prior to the completion of his degree so here is an opportunity for the teachers to give them a, give them assignments that tomorrow there is going to be hearing in such and such case in the supreme court i am teaching you this subject now here is a new assignment you spend couple of hours go through those witness watch those proceedings and write couple of pages of your own analysis of this particular you know particular uh, rule this particular proviso this etc etc so this actually means there is tons of information much more than it used to be available in the traditional model so here in this process the teacher's role is actually a guide and facilitator to enrich the and enhance the skill of the enrich and enhance the skill of the students by using technology 
and by using the delivery methodology and blending them into the curriculum. So that is the beauty. So that is the actually transformation that is happening. So what is required is the institutions also need to revise their curriculum, include these and our statutory and regulatory bodies are already encouraging that. For example, UGC has brought UGC credit framework for SWAM courses. Likewise, you know, AICT has already said, you know, you need to have a internship for these many weeks during your vacation for the engineering students, medic, MBA students, etc., etc. So I'm saying is these are regulatory bodies. They have already aligned their policies accordingly. So what is required is that at the institution level or at, at the you know, decision making level in the institutions, we need to take care of these. Now, the, there was in the uh, there was a methodology of rigid and fixed delivery. Taking the same example that uh, if there is actually a, if there is any um, um, a student who misses the class of a particular Guruji, he is gone. So he it is very fixed time and fixed space. That is no longer true. We have all witnessed in the recent past, you know, in 2020 and 2021 students were all moved to different uh, their hometowns and they were attending the classes that means anytime anywhere so that delivery methodology becomes flexible so the challenge of lack of continuity of the students in the class is also need to be addressed through technology so there are you know uh, instead of single path progression we have to move to multi path progression all of that is actually happening in 20, 21st century and our institutions, our faculty members need to be appropriately aligned and we need to change our methodology also and upskill ourselves, enhance the infrastructure or at least the knowledge base in our institution so that we can use the infrastructure of other institution also by way of technology. We will look into it, how we are doing it and how it is helpful. So instead of single sense the the multimedia applications through multi sensory simulation will be helpful like take the example that i gave the galaxy example so instead of delivery of information will be exchange of information which means if suppose a law faculty member teaching a law assigns gives a home assignment to the students that you watch the youtube video of supreme court hearing for such and such case today and tomorrow each one or each group of students has to make a presentation of five minutes or 10 minutes of what are your key observations from that hearing on the Supreme Court. So this will become you know, exchange of information. So the communication instead of monologue, it becomes dialogue and collaborative. And the resources instead of the analog resources, it becomes digital, which means instead of only looking at the physical books in the library available in my own institution, we do now have access to all the books available in all the libraries across the country as long as they have become part of the national digital library so as one of the faculty members was mentioning in the chat box that we have very limited resources in our institution fine today through the government funded projects the institutions are collaborating with each other and in those collaboration in those collaborations uh, we have to have digital resources and we can use those digital resources. We will look at how. So what government of India has done has actually uh, funded digital India project where the, there is a lot of focus on digitization and making the resources available. So here are some examples of national digital resources that we can use in our teaching, learning and research process appropriately. So here is a portal called sakshat.ac.in. You can see on the screen. Is my screen visible? Can somebody mention what URL is? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Absolutely fine. So, so you can see Sakshat portal is actually a portal that was inaugurated in 2006 by the then president, Dr. APJ Abul Kalam. And we all know education was very close to his heart. So he has perceived and conceived the idea and inaugurated a portal saying that this portal will help the remotest village a, a, a student of india uh, who is educationally backward who is economically backward 
in the remotest corner across India can still get benefited by the content being published on Sachat portal. That was the concept with which this portal was initiated and inaugurated by our, our uh, you know, very learned uh, president of India, Dr. Kalam. And uh, in fact, we all know that he even died while giving a lecture. So education was very close to his heart and his clean and, you know, uh, life is available to the public and he encouraged the use of technology and through technology, even though he has died, but we can still watch his videos and get motivated. So that was the concept and the uh, envisioned by the, the then president and then he had inaugurated this portal. Subsequent, all uh, presidents and the governments have taken it forward further and have have enriched many more uh, you know initiatives in that direction so nptel is one of them national program on technology enabled learning now this this is another national digital resource which we can refer to this is basically what has happened is this is again a program under nmeict so there is a national mission on education through ict so for this purpose for this purpose the uh, the uh, national program on uh, on technology enabled learning what happened is the government has realized that um, with the increase in population the education is a government responsibility but building an institution is not an easy task it requires lots and lots of resources money time and it takes you know decades to build institution so it is not possible to build more and more institution that's why private participation was allowed so that the education need of the masses of the india can be fulfilled so when when the privatization was done for education private participation was allowed private parties built up their own though so there were private colleges private universities etc etc now there they started you know building very good buildings etc but the other infrastructure like laboratory like good teachers etc they were not up to the mark in many cases. So realizing this challenge, what government did is, I, I, I mean, let's take the example of IITs. There are few IITs, there are few IIMs, there are few AIMS, there are few central universities, but there are so many colleges, so many private universities. Now, not every national, not every student is fortunate enough to get admission in IITs. So while the student may not get admission to IIT because there is a selection process, there is a you know limited number of seats, but still that a student studying in any college should be able to have access to the content being taught in IITs. With that idea, the NPTEL was funded. So the lectures being taught actually in IITs are recorded and they are made available through NPTEL. So even if there is a teacher who is teaching a particular course for the first time in some private engineering college, he also has access to NPTEL. So he can see how it is being taught in IITs, how it is being taught in tier one institutions. So he or she can enrich his or her skill accordingly for the purpose of for the purpose of uh, uh, making sure that you know uh, there is a level playing field as far as from the government side is concerned which means the government has made the resources available and uh, uh, the what is called uh, uh, the people get selected or not selected that is their uh, competence and the limited number of seats but from the government side the content being taught there has been made available to all so that is an initiative with that the nptel initiative was approved and then we have uh, vlab.co.in that's another initiative after the class, please. No, uh, after the class. I don't uh, allow things in the middle of my class. So, so uh, then we have uh, vlab.co.in, uh, another uh, uh, initiative. Here, basically, what is happening is we have a uh, virtual lab. And in the, what happens is, most of the institutions, see, laboratory setup is a very, very costly affair. Equipments do a lot of cost. So costing of the equipment uh, is, is basically very, very uh, 
uh, uh, I mean, it's a challenge. If so, private colleges will say we don't have that kind of admissions, we don't have that kind of funds. Therefore, we are unable to we are unable to do this uh, um, uh, funding. So ultimately, when equipments are not there, many of the laboratories require equipment for doing proper experiments. In the absence of equipment, ultimate sufferer is the student. So to bridge this loss, to take care of the gaps, what government has done, the government has funded virtual labs, which means these virtual labs are actually physical labs in some institution which have been virtualized and made available 24 by 7 across the country by any student from any corner of the country can run these experiments virtually and so that if is his or her own institution is not providing a very good lab facility the student can still get learnings and knowledge acquired so this is the advantage uh, that the this particular uh, project or this initiative of government is offering then we have epg in patshala so lots and lots of courses have been uh, digitized they have been made available and uh, this can be referred by teachers it can be referred by students it can be referred by you know learners across the country so a, a particular subject being taught in my college suppose my my teacher is not that good in my private college and i am suffering as a student i still have the option of referring the content and likewise if a particular teacher is teaching the course for the first time then he or she can actually look into look into the uh, content and try to uh, um, in uh, you know um, up upskill oneself so this is the lots and lots of course we will also see a demo of these national digital resources after the presentation is over then we have swam portal we all know swam is a massive open online course platform for the indian uh, um, it's an actually indian MOOCs platform so MOOCs is an initiative we all know that it, it was born in 2011-12 when one of the universities in US tried to do. See, what happens is as we move higher into the education system, there is a concept of specialization. So when specialization is, is there, at that point in time, in the specialization, the expert for a particular field will be available in some institute, right? But they in order for others to get benefited from the expertise of that particular expert what are the options suppose there is an expert sitting in australia in a particular university then for others to get benefited there are two options either that particular expert professor from australia travels to different countries interacts with different people option one option two uh, everyone else from different countries travel to australia meet that professor get benefited these are the two options. Both of them are practically not possible because it involves cost, it involves passport visa, it involves so many challenges and, and there is challenge of time. So in order to overcome this problem, an experiment was performed in 2011, late 2011. One of the professors from a university in US did an experiment and that experiment was very, very successful. He tried to conduct a session which is now today called as MOOCs and in that session people from different countries different continents joined it was very very successful thousands of people joined that based on the success of that experiment the birth of MOOCs was actually that gave a birth to the concept of MOOCs and thereafter lots of platforms like edX right like uh, and uh, you know so many MOOCs platform provider came MOOCs have become very, very popular and our government also had started an initiative called SWEM where lots and lots of courses are being made available. I'm sure many of you would have already seen the SWEM platform and would have used. In fact, UGC has brought a SWEM credit framework also to promote use of SWEM in various institutions to some percentage, to some extent, right? And then we have another national digital resource called swemprabha.gov.in. So this SWEM Prabha portal is actually it's a direct to home dish tv and in this dish tv uh, in direct to home dish tv channel we would uh, be basically uh, um, 
the, the lots and lots of programmed are being aired so in in the college in the institutions in the library and you know, this this tv can be subscribed and it can be put into the common places where the students can sit and watch these programs lots and lots of programs are being aired although not only this tv it can also be accessed through the internet we will see when we are looking at the demo side of it right and then we have one more uh, uh, digital resource called national digital library so the the last one is the national digital library which means different libraries have become part of the national digital library so if the users in any institution want to get access to the all the resources available under the umbrella of national digital library they can access those resources sitting in their own institution rather than needing to travel outside or so that uh, so this enhances the capacity of the individual student individual teacher and individual researcher so coming back to the original uh, uh, statement that we were making that technology helps us to find meaningful and affordable solutions technology alone can't solve the problem but we can definitely blend technology with the people and process to achieve excellence now this training that is happening is actually part of enriching and upskilling of the people through which you know we have people we have technology and then we have process so the process side of thing will be in the individual institutions in the decision making bodies of the institutions the there will be some you know those individual bodies will approve certain policies and procedures through which technology can be recognized and technology enabled solutions can be incorporated into the teaching learning in the assessment process etc etc so all the three when they are blended together then only we are able to achieve excellence so let us uh, before we get into the discussion of research let me take a few minutes to showcase the national digital resources that we have just talked about right so give me one minute please uh, let me is my browser visible yes sir okay स्वयंप्रभाइटर higher education and school education so we can in fact use this for our school kids also so if there are school education uh, uh, system attached to our institution we can use that also so here you can see here there are lots of channels where lots and lots of programs are being aired for example ncert e vidya 11 ncert vidya 12 so i would request all the participants in your leisure time kindly explore these right so if we click here it will uh, it is basically uh, there are upcoming there are current and there are archives so suppose some that at that time our uh, our school students were busy so we they can refer the archive and in the archive the recorded version is available so it is related to different classes right so they can it relates to different subjects different classes and then they can actually uh, go through this and then uh, enhance their learning right so there are lots and lots of archived programs are available and i would say uh, you can please explore it during your free time right so if we click on the content it will open a you know it will open a, a, discover content as a teacher discover content as a student discover content as a school head discover content as parent lots and lots of options are available so i'll say uh, let's say if i want to sir discover, yeah uh, sorry to interrupt actually yeah. i can't see the controls otherwise i would have uh, messaged uh, sir um, the portal that you are showing there is a login symbol even right now i can see it so yes. does it mean that uh, in order to access the courses we need to log in or register or you can register uh, registration is very easy not a, not at all a problem there is does no, it require institutional uh, you can um, register login? as a learner directly 
even if institution has not registered, there is no issue. You can register. It's not a problem. So it is not for profit. So please understand that it is not for making money out of it. It is basically for knowing what all people are using the facility, right? So here is a. You can see here some phone number is also being displayed. You can, if you want to support institution wants an institution level, that is also possible. Otherwise, individuals, faculty members can also do it, right? So what I'm saying is this one example. Likewise, we have higher education. In here, we have lots and lots of subjects. So here, current programs, you know, program schedule, live sessions, and the recorded session. We attend the live sessions. Um, uh, you can uh, that is also possible, and we can also do you know uh, the recorded versions. So lots and lots of them are available. Just one of the nat national digital resources. Now let us go back to the second one that I was referring called VLab, right? VLab.co.in. So you have got virtual labs. Now virtual labs are very good initiative. Basically, laboratories reinforce the function that was being taught in the in the uh, laboratories. Reinforce the concept that was being taught in the uh, what is called um, the theoretical classes. So we. Not lots of participating whose laboratories have been virtualized, and here are the different subjects. For example, let me take a, a, a example of biotechnology and biomedical engineering or chemical. Sciences. Let me take the example of chemical sciences, right? So, we have uh, let's say inorganic chemistry virtual lab, right? So, I have uh, you can see here that. It has got lots and lots of, uh, you know, resources available, and it has got theory, it has got procedure, it has got self-evaluation, it has got simulator, it has got assignment, references, it has got a feedback methodology also. So here also one can create a login and then start referring because they would like to know who is using it and maybe obtain feedback from time to time. So that's the right. So here we can see here that all those experiments can be performed virtually without requiring physical chemicals or physical equipments. All of that is possible. The content is very nicely designed. So I'd say this is something that helps a lot and that is very, very vital for, for basically uh, uh, overcoming the impediments or overcoming the weaknesses due to shortage of the equipment, etc. Is that clear? So, yes, sir. Let's move back to another resource that we talked about. We had mentioned about uh, Swam platform. We had mentioned Swam. I'm sure you would have been this Swam. We have already seen. Let's see Swam. Swam. Dot gov. Dot. Right. Is that clear? Now we have SWIM. We have lots and lots of courses available. Here also, there are two types of accounts to be registered. One is the learner account. The other is the teacher account. Teacher account is only when you have been allotted a course to be built on the SWIM platform. Otherwise, learner account can be created by all of us and all of our students. And there we can go through these courses. We can identify the appropriate courses. There are two types of courses. One is called self-paced learning courses. Those self-paced learning courses are similar to any other courses, and there is no schedule for it. You, one can learn at its own pace. But the other one, is the, which is the scheduled courses, there is going to be a scheduling, and in that scheduled courses, the, in the scheduled courses, there will be a schedule, there will be an exam. So all of that is possible. So from time to time, the advertisement will happen. So one can create so, and we are the upcoming courses where enrollment is open. Kindly mute yourself. So these resources, right? Some somebody wants to do uh, art of C programming, one can register here. Somebody wants to learn artificial intelligence using prologue. So some 12 week course is happening, uh, right? And enrollment ends on 29 February. So you can see here 
these are all the courses where enrollment is still open so one can enroll for on these courses go through these courses as per the kindly mute yourself and then mute ma'am mute mute kar lijiye so then we can uh, avail these uh, you know national digital resources for uh, for uh, helping our students now there is one more thing that i wanted to demonstrate uh, if we have now coming back to the problems that we discussed we discussed that there are problems and those problems need to be those problems need to be addressed for example a student uh, joined the class but in the middle of the class because he is in a village from the village he he dropped out and his he had electricity problem or connectivity problem and he could never join right so uh, for all such thing there has got to be a solution called lms so institutions many institutions have an lms solution which is called learning management system and we do have a learning management system in amu also and and this lm learning management system is available and hosted in 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 inside the university premise in the computer center of the university and uh, we are uh, managing the technical side of it then there are uh, faculty wise coordinators who take care of the uh, accounts in their faculty and the mentoring of the users and we do conduct training now what happens is i'll show you, showcase you the internals of an lms through which we can actually solve the problem so let me just try to log in as a as a as a teacher into the lms and i'll just show you how we can right so we have uh, now we have uh, is is the dashboard visible right now no yes what, sir what yes sir. Sir. yes sir okay cool yes sir so, let us look at a, 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 a this is actually a, my own dashboard so i just i'll just showcase the a, a teachers dashboard now here is a, a it has got a fantastic facility of announcements so if you want to announce something to all your students just make the announcement for example uh, uh, on 18th november 2023 i made an announcement for assignment submission so when i post this assignment immediately i don't have to immediately it will go to the message will go to the all my students and they'll get an alert on their smartphone and here are my students Participate, participating students and uh, uh, here is the list for example so on their smartphone they will get an alert that a new uh, uh, announcement has come from my teacher so immediately they will see likewise if i want to announce the uh, you know anything related to the test or quiz or whatever that's quite possible so that's how it is basically apart from that uh, i uh, will upload the uh, suppose the student was in my class he missed out then after the class i will upload the slides so when i upload the slide it is slide is available to the student he can download so he can go and download this slide at himself and i will know whether this student has downloaded or not because a dashboard is available with me that tells me when did the student log in for example this particular student logged in 80 days 13 hours back suppose i give some student assignment and he says sir i have completed the assignment orally he is saying but i can see he has not even logged into the portal so that means he is not telling the truth so i need to you know pull him or i need to you know show him that you do, you have not even logged into the portal you are saying that you have completed the assignment then he doesn't have to come to me to submit the assignment he will submit the assignment now here are my slides but at times to reinforce the concept i would ask my student i will provide him a small url of some educational resources for the purpose of for example uh, i will provide uh, let's say i am teaching uh, domain name system uh, which is which is one of the topics in the syllabus concern uh, uh, then i can provide him a reference uh, a, a, a url to some uh, guide available in public domain that please go through this guide so i have uploaded that link so student doesn't have to search here and there 
he will straight away he will straight away go and uh, he will look at this resource which has got some relevant material some small videos so it will give him further insights into the concept of that particular topic there is this is the advantage is offers so there is one stop shop so a student will go through my slides a student will attend my class he will also look at some of the open educational resources that i have linked in it in my in my curriculum in my uh, uh, model dashboard or in my uh, assignments dashboard and then whether he just like this mark there will be a student also when he completes he will put a mark and it will get an update to the teacher likewise assignments can be given and another thing is uh, as far as assignments is concerned we all know that many students just copy and submit the assignment without really involving the learning which is actually defeating the purpose of assignment so what we can do is we can actually ask a student to go through some of the uh, different students different type of assignments and then ask them that you please uh, 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 submit the assignment for example this is actual practical example i have given given some assignment but i have put a important note please read this important note each student must an submit answer in his own handwriting else it is liable for disqualification for grading evaluation now even if he is copying he is writing in his own handwriting he is reading it I am I'm just trying to make sure that and then when he submits, I will only grade, for example, here is an assignment submitted by my student. So when I open this assignment for uh, grading and submission, I have seen that he has written in his own handwriting. So at least he has read what he is writing. If, if I allow the typed version, you know, copy, control, C, control, V and submit. So I am just trying to, you know, guide the student to, through so as to make sure that he is and this this submission is time based so here is this this is the advantage that we can have through something called lms that can be implemented in the institution and if the institution has not implemented then the individual teachers can also use the cloud version up to some extent without incurring any cost so this this all uh, takes care of some of the issues right likewise we can have the uh, questions that may be given and then the student will be answering those questions uh, and then it can be evaluated here so that then that we can directly download the grade report from here so who got what grade will get automatically and we can download the grade report right so something like that so lots and lots of options are available in the lms so lms is one of the solutions that we have implemented in our university and other institutions also can implement what we have implemented is actually Moodle. So it's a modular object oriented dynamic learning environment, which is one of the best LMS across the globe that we have implemented. And many of the top, almost all top 100 institutions worldwide have LMS. So we have implemented one of the LMS relevant. Likewise, we can, you can also think of using some LMS to take care of some of the problems. So this is as far as teaching learning is concerned. Now we have got about 30 minutes. If you have any questions in what we have discussed so far, please raise your questions. Otherwise, we'll proceed further on the third component, which is the research support and research support tools. Any questions in what we have discussed so far? Sir? Yeah. Uh, sir, this is a very generic question. Isn't that you? We are talking about um, how to um, teach uh, about the galaxy system to the students, and they can re they don't have to pictureize; they just have to see what the teacher is showing, and that's how they get just the correct idea of what they should learn. Um, this is uh, very good of all kind of technical knowledge or any kind of knowledge that requires facts of figures yeah. but sir i am a person of literature and i teach literature to the students yeah. there are many times when we do not have the resources or maybe i want to enhance their imaginative capabilities what yeah. should i do sir yeah so very good now let me uh, let me uh, let me take you through we have talked so far about national digital resources there are international digital resources also which we can avail without without moving an inch from our desk so we have here is a website is it visible is it visible it is yes sir. Yes, sir. yes yes sir it is yes, sir. mit open yes, source there top institutions of the world 
they often lots and lots of open courseware and open courseware belonging to different mit is just one example there are so many other institutions oxford cambridge you know stanford so many universities are offering so we have open courseware so what we can do is we can see what all, for example ma'am what is your subject please tell me what is your english literature huh english literature sir literature so let me say english literature right so we have plenty of moocs courses on the english literature which is being offered a let let i've just said in front of you let's see so in the english literature a number of moocs courses are available maybe looking at these moocs courses how they are using innovative methodologies and for english literature there are swam courses there are swam prabha let let's go to one of the while it is search opening let me also say for the same time let's say epg patshala one of the one of the urls that we had listed right here we have epg patshala right so we have a number of uh, courses and subject here you can see ma'am english there are 560 resources related to english this is epg patshala right so i am going to english and then i see here english literature right english literature up to 1590 then beyond that okay so let me open english literature then i have we, i i have got so many so for english literature there is let me open this right here we have e text and we can see the material that is available here that is downloadable right so relevance of the content i i think you may be in a better position to judge right and then we have self learning now where we have the content which in in the form of video right this is as far as introduction to the age is concerned let me move to something development of english drama or something like that again i have e learning so i have got text transcript and then i have the video plenty of resources are available for this is just as far as english literature then we move to uh, english literature beyond 1590 what it makes i mean the the actual sense of the subject you may be in a better position introduction to shakespeare something like that we have e text we have learn more and we have self learning so there is a video available so this video you can so you can find plenty of material available in the epg patshala also which is being be, being used innovatively by other institutions so you can find lots and lots of literature likewise if somebody is from economics somebody is from chinese buddhist studies education pharmaceutical sciences media so many subjects right this is as far as the lecture side of is concerned for the research side we will be discussing when we talk about the research support madam did it answer your query to some extent yes sir thank you very much sir okay fine so i, I mean this is one of the, the national digital resource which is already on our slide that i had shown epg patshala right so this is as far as teaching learning is concerned i will say explore your subject find the relevant material take a portion of it also pass it on to your student in your lms and you know it, it is very wide forensic sciences environmental sciences mathematics you know physics psychology russian studies so on and so forth the relevant con relevance and context you can decipher much better than i because i i am from it field so i can maybe information technology and computer science i can decipher but others you can make better sense and you can correlate it with the your need of your learners right okay so let's any other question before i move to the research part no questions right no sir okay fine so here is ma'am it has also said you know some of the uh, uh, courses uh, available on the various moocs platform so i would say first explore the e swam prabha uh, swam prabha and the e e ppg patshala and then look for you know other uh, co courses open uh, international digital resources apart from that in our university website also let me just open amu.ac.in 
we had i think in the during covid pandemic under the student services we had listed here is the url is it visible open access and open learning yes, yes sir so you go to amu.ac.in go to student services under that you can see here open access and open learning resources you click on that it will download it will open to a page and here is a pdf download this pdf it has got tons and tons of urls of different resources belonging to different subjects you can see some of them are all we have discussed is already here and here you can find subject wise lots and lots of resources that probably might be relevant it might find some value for you so you can please these are all open access so it requires does not require a subscription you can directly use some of these resources right so that might be helpful uh, for you then you can explore the individual subjects and relevant right okay so uh, for the uh, let me just put the url in the chat box so that you can copy easily and download if required but we'll go to student services we'll go to open access and online so i'll just copy that and put it in the chat box so you can right so right so i have pinned the message you can uh, click on this and also avail these uh, you know download that and then you can at your leisure you can go through right so uh, see so if there are no more questions then i'll move to the research support tools right now let's let's go to the research side of things now my question to all the participants as research supervisors or as ex research scholars phd students in some point in time previously you might have had gone through the research process and obviously one of the key objectives of phd is continue post phd research right so there would be some phd students some you know research scholars etc with whom the research supervisors would be interacting and continuing the research so in terms of the technological support in terms of the technological support for uh, for the research help me understand what are the problems now let us again in the chat box move and see what problems so that by the end of the discussion we see whether we have found any solutions to the problem that we flagged by the end of the session that will be very nice if you are able to solve that we are living in world of problems right not all problems are solvable but if we are able to find some solution meaningful affordable solutions to some of the problems that has reduced the quantum of problem right so that should be the approach help us understand what are the problems from your eyes what are the problems what are the problems of research scholars what are the problems of research supervisors let's talk mention the problem in the chat box if you believe any now in various session with the research scholars with the research supervisors and in all when we privately ask the research scholars some common problems the research scholar will say my supervisor is not available my supervisor doesn't have time for me he is too busy this is the version of research scholar what about supervisor supervisor will say my student is very you know he is visible to me only when he has to get the scholarship paper signed or when the quarterly or six monthly reports coming so these are all the common uh, concerns two side of the story student will say supervisor is very busy he is not available and yes mr upendra please go ahead what's your query upendra Singh, please go ahead. You have raised your hand. Go ahead. What is your query? Please unmute and speak. Right now you are muted. Or if you have some problem with your audio, then you can put the, your query in the chat box. Okay. So I don't know. Maybe. Okay. We <laughs> we know few pledge. We will get back to the pledge plagiarism side of it. We will we'll get to it. plagiarism checker tool but we don't know any okay 
we will, we will we'll get back to it so you, your question is very very related relevant uh, specific to the uh, flag check tool okay so we'll we'll get to it uh, any other uh, any other problem that you see let's say a phd student has taken completed the admission process he or she after completing the admission process from whatever department handles admission walks into the department what he or she should do during first day first week first month first year and how technology can help him or her do it better do it more effectively is what we would be endeavoring to focus on so in the absence of any technology support or any technical support how it is happening today how it is had been happening in past this is what i want to hear from you after the fellow completes the admission phd student walks into the department what does he do or what does she do any ideas any suggestions any inputs sir i think uh, he uh, studies about the uh, the lab which in which he is working he or she is working and what, what is the work that is being carried out by his supervisor okay cool so so in fact uh, when he has taken the admission probably supervisor allotment uh, would happen after few weeks few months right so there will be typically some some course wear right he'll have to do some course to be completed right one of the course will be also on the research methodology the other will be related to some subject as you rightly mentioned some subject that he is doing to do research on then uh, what will happen he, he needs to identify some problems right problem statement or the research question so uh, finally leading to the topic of the research right thesis topic etc etc so how how that is identified and how soon that gets identified and how how we ensure that the topic is good enough for carrying taking it forward all of those are some of the decision points or some of the ambiguities or some of the areas where the research scholar is supposed to focus now how 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 is the topic identified is it suggested by some friend is it suggested by the supervisor is it proposed by the student or is it the outcome of some exercise some due process some process at the out out output of which you know he, he'll have better clarity better visibility etc etc because this, i want to make this interactive because i want to hear from you also right now any inputs from the participants sir a uh, problem maybe the from his interest area very good okay so area of the interest of the research scholar right or the area of the work of the research supervisor or the department because any department will be maintaining certain thrust areas of research right a department will have different faculty members those faculty members will be doing some research in some some particular area right so what is important is when as as somebody has mentioned in the chat box very rightly there is a process of literature review so literature review the 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 what is literature review how it should be done what are the types of literature review etc will be part of the research method methodology course itself but all said and done he needs to the research scholar needs to conduct a proper literature review if it is not done properly and he starts working down the line after few months uh, 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 he will realize that what he is doing is already done somebody else has already done so it's not you know it's a wasted effort on his part or her part so what is in, in this entire process where is the role of technology and how technology can help me is we are trying to focus on that so technology offers certain tools and techniques that if embedded along with the research process of the institution can make the things more effective much better and more pleasant for example let me get back to the slide so we have 
is the slide visible now yes, yes sir. sir yes sir okay so yes, sir. there are different perspectives yes, right there is a perspective of the research both are right you can see here two people looking at a at a picture right one person is seeing it as nine and saying no it is not six it is nine the other person is seeing it at six and say no it is six not nine both of them are correct in their own perspective but actually so there are different perspectives of the research scholar and research supervisor all of that has got to be resolved that is where we can use technology and we can arrive at a topic which is worth pursuing which means a problem has to be identified through a process so there will be a literature review there are tools and techniques available for making the literature review more effective that boils down to search methodologies right so there are different types of search method how do we search information today open question for all departments how to search information how do you search information today yes my friends tell me from search engine from search engine so google okay uh, google, other also okay google is is for searching normal information but for the research uh, uh, what research has already happened searching through google is not a good idea instead it is better to search through the databases which are indexing the published article can we name some of them pubmed absolutely pubmed is an example for medical science right pubmed is absolutely fine so we have scopus right we have scopus we have web of science very nice we have web of google scholar web of science so we have a number of databases which are actually indexing the published articles of the so here we have so when we want to search we would prefer searching a database that indexes published articles research articles related to the subject in which the particular research scholar is aiming to pursue the research right so searching through google is not at all a good idea because it is very easy to publish normal article only you need a place to host and you can publish it but as far as research is concerned each research publication has got some quality control methodology right each, each journal has its own author guideline reviewer guideline editor guideline wagera, wagera. and those are any paper which gets published will would have gone through the, those articles right so searching the paper in a, normally in the google is not at all a good idea we may end up you know, uh, causing self-inflicted injuries to ourselves if we use Google itself for the research. Search. We should search the indexed databases, for example, PubMed, for example, Scopus, for example, Web of Science. And if you belong to a different subject, find out what are the databases which are indexing the articles, authentic articles, published research articles, and search through those databases, right? So, kindly uh, use those proper so here are some we have just looked at three examples not these three examples will not cover all the subjects so based on your subject that you belong to try to find out the relevant database and try to search through it for example let me try to search let's say i want to do research in in uh, cyber security let's I, i'm just taking a hypothetical example so you can correlate this with the example of your own subject let's say i want to say cyber cyber crime or something like that right so i have searched the scopus based on the cyber crime as my keyword and i can see here we have uh, uh, a number of articles now an article published in 2024 here it is the article that is published in such and such journal in right and uh, it is in volume one etc etc likewise we can so we can identify the relevant uh, papers we can go through the abstract and if it is relevant then we can download these papers 
and once we download the paper another problem starts the problem is in the life of a research scholar he starts doing research he will have his or her first paper then her, his or her second paper then third paper fourth paper and so on and so forth by the time he or she is in a position to submit his thesis or her thesis he would have already read 200 250 300 research papers how to manage those 200 papers how to manage those 300 papers is another problem that is what to solve that problem there is a technology based solution called reference manager tool so that's we have a number of reference manager tools. some of you would have used it would be aware of it like endnote like zotero like like mendeley etc etc so if we use those tools which means when once we identify the paper once we download the paper we can put it in our library in the reference manager library and from there we can refer them we can cite them when we are using in our research right so that's the uh, another important as far as google is concerned if you really want to use google for seeing the research paper we have a we have scholar.google.com here you can go and you can you can search for you know author or you can search for the paper for example if i say uh, artificial intelligence on the google scholar portal so you can see here that on google scholar we find that you know there are artificial intelligence in medicine some articles are published so as far if we have to use google then it is better to use the google scholar to find out what relevant uh, papers are being available there in the being maintained by various scholars through google scholar right so if at all you have to use google please go to google scholar and try to do that but otherwise uh, make sure that you are using indexed databases and you are searching through those databases apart from that there is another problem that some of the participants mentioned that you know we don't have some of the journals are having you know charging and our institution does not have subscribed to that so how do we access those papers so we have something called doaj directory of open access journals so there is actually a directory which is providing uh, which is indexing all the open access journals so we can see here it has got 80 languages it has got 134 countries it has got 13658 and it has got 2425 all of that so all these uh, all these journals will be uh, are available and we can search articles so again if i if i type here cyber crime let me try to find out how many research papers related to cyber crime are available in the open access journal i can see here that there is a paper available impact of development of social impact of the development of society on economic and financial crime case right using blockchain using uh, enhancing awareness of cyber crime etc etc so these papers since they are open access journals they are open access they can be downloaded right so these papers can be downloaded here is we have right is that clear so we can read online and we can also download right so you can since it's an open access journal the entire paper is available without uh, any charge it can be downloaded and then it can be referred so this this way we can overcome some of the limitations of lack of access to resources and it has got fairly good number of articles available so that can be used by the research scholars any questions in what we discussed so far before we get to the discussion of uh, the um, last point which was uh, uh, or let me just try to quickly rush through the uh, slides we have got few more minutes so we have a mendeley as a mendeley is another reference manager tool that can be used and it helps keeping the uh, references it also helps providing uh, academic social networking research collaboration career development all of those is available so Mendeley, I will instead of going through the slide, I will just showcase 
थ्री हियर इज दी साइट वेयर यूजर्स कैन गो एंड क्रिएट ए फ्री मेंडले अकाउंट एंड देन दे कैन स्टार्ट यूजिंग दी मेंडले अकाउंट देर इज अ डेस्कटॉप वर्जन देर इज अ मोबाइल एप वर्जन ऑल्सो विच विच कैन बी डाउनलोडेड एंड इंस्टॉल्ड इन द लैपटॉप और डेस्कटॉप बट मेंडले कैन बी यूज राइट so in that way the the life of a research scholar and research supervisor becomes much easier whenever there is a need for whenever there is a need for uh, using technology to be better and more effective researcher and more effective you know supervisor through use of technology right so i mean it anything that we are doing manually if we can automate certain portion of it through technology it will be much better right any questions in what we have discussed so far sir can i ask something here uh, go ahead uh, sir there are many um, academic institutions that do not get access to the paid journals like jstor proquest now for uh, people like us who teach literature or any such theoretical subject for us we do yeah. not have experiments so journals are our only resources or books okay but journals are considered better because they are uh, more updated but sir in case if we don't have access to a single database um and open access journals don't really always give us the good quality papers or even the seminal papers so what are we supposed to do then see see the, if if the, there is a genuine need for those index databases and your institution is not providing that probably they do not see the value in it because the institution's leadership team or the administrative team needs to see a value in that so we have to convince them we have to tell them the problem that we have and most of these accrediting bodies like you right know, like nac or or ranking agencies they do have parameters related to the research so point number 1 point number 2 open access journals do not have good quality papers is is actually a myth most of the journals open access journals are very good quality in fact earlier what was happening is there were paid journals and there were free journals so those fly by night journals were charging and publishing articles so in order to overcome the issue what has happened even good quality journals have also started making their access open and then they start charging the so so the that concept is no longer valid number one number two if while while the you can go to google scholar search for your article because if if it is published by because who is publishing these articles some faculty member some professor some researchers somewhere across the globe right so they would have definitely be listed in google scholar right so what can we can do is we can write to them because when we find their paper we we know their contact details we can write to them that i am doing so and so kindly provide me if 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 they accept the request they will provide in my experience whenever we have written or many times many students write to us for our paper we help them so that is the interim solution but going forward institution support is required and i would say present your case properly to your management of the institution to subscribe those those articles and look at the national digital library also whether in the national digital library whether those resources are available if yes then you can refer through national digital library also right and and most of the institutions are being encouraged to do collaboration so when you are collaborating if it is available in the collaborating institution you can refer to that them also right and have you know some network uh, with other researchers right any other questions i think we are almost uh, done as far as our time is concerned so i would like to uh, before i come conclude any questions related to the research if we have any as far as the plaq check tools are concerned we have uh, we have generally these tools available we have generally these tools available in the we have generally these tools available in the we have generally these tools available in the uh um generally these tools are available in the um, libraries you know all said and done these tools have some cost associated generally there will be some constraint in every institution no matter what so what practically i have found is a practical solution that i have observed 
that when a PhD student is in the second year or third year or I mean in the final year of uh, you know their PhD work, they need these tools, right? And those tools are very restrictive in nature that you know you have to send your work there. They will check and give you a report. This problem is very very common. So what practically some students have done is two or three students pooled their resources, gone in for a student version subscription in the one of their years, one of the closing years of their PhD. So in that process, they they don't have to depend on anybody. And since the student version of these tools are less expensive, they are very very nominal charges. So it is sort of affordable. So this could be a practical solution or pending the full blown access availability to each and every faculty member and each and every student. Generally, university also or institution also have budgetary constraints. So there are these are all the competing demands. So that's how we can manage them. And there are some free tools available, but they do have some limitations. For instance, these many uh, KBs or MBs you can search in one day, one week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Is that okay? So any other questions? Yeah. Thanks a lot for your time. I think our time is up. So thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.